Hi there, we're going to introduce one final concept in this lesson on handling form data and validation. And the concept is HTML escaping. So let's see exactly what this, uh, this, this concept is via a motivating example. So let's go back to our initial Hello World form and uh, remind ourselves of what that did because we're going to use it to, to um, demonstrate the need for HTML escaping. Recall that in a prior lesson, we set up a form to ask the user for their first name via an input named first name. And then when they submitted the form, we would then greet them with a message that used their first name in the, gre in the greeting. So um, I have my application up and running. Let's just see how this works. Here's my form that just um, asks for a first name. If I type it in and hit enter, notice that I then get this, uh, this specific message using that submitted form data. So the, the concept around HTML escaping is that anytime we take in user data that can then be used within a page, such as my name is here that was submitted via the form on the previous page, anytime we have data that can be potentially used in a page like that, we need to escape it. Um, and so let's see exactly what we mean by that. So if I come over here and say I were just wanting to mess around or even potentially malicious, I could uh, enter in this message that I've actually already entered it in before. Uh, so let me just use that. And I can basically insert some HTML in this in this string. And let's see what happens when I do this. If I submit this now, notice that that HTML is then inserted in the response, right? So um, if we look at the, the source of the page, the data that I typed in was basically this data right here. Right, And so I was able to basically break the formatting or, or add my own formatting into the page by just being clever about it, adding HTML into the form box. Okay, So that's, that's, that's something we're going to want to fix. You might say, well, is that, that such, such a big deal? You know, the user can, can maybe break the layout of her page, but if you know, they're trying to do that specifically, maybe they get what's coming to them. Well, let me show you another example of, of the same sort of concept that actually is a little bit more... Um, dangerous. So I've actually prepared a little bit of string here. I'm going to just copy this. And this is going to basically uh, insert some JavaScript within the page. So if I do this now and I submit my query, notice that some JavaScript is in the page and it actually just generated this pop-up box. So the JavaScript ran when this page was rendered. Okay, so that just shows you that a user can actually insert scripts within your within your site that can actually do quite a bit of harm if you're not careful. So what we want to do is we want to prevent this from happening. All right, so it's actually pretty simple to do. Let's go ahead and go back to our um, our code and see how to do it. So we we basically want to look at where am I going to be inserting the user submitted data into a page. And, and sort of address the issue right there where that happens. All right, so right here uh, at first name, I want to go ahead and escape this. So in order to escape this, escaping is going to be a way of um, per, you know, turning any HTML markup that might be in the string into other characters that won't render as HTML. So let's go ahead and add um, cgi.escape to, to wrap this, this, uh, this variable. Okay, so there's a module called CGI that includes an escape method that will convert uh, just raw string data into HTML encoded data. So um, I'm going to have to import that. And then let's go ahead and see how it works, and we'll see exactly what we mean by HTML encoded data in a second. Okay, so now if I come over here and I try to just do the naive, uh, naive one I did where I just inserted plain HTML, Notice that that HTML is now like visible on the page. It's not rendered and it didn't, it didn't kind of break the formatting of my page. It just was rendered as HTML. And if I go ahead and look at the source, you'll see that in place of the angle brackets, we have these things that are ampersand LT colon semicolon and ampersand GT semicolon. So when I call CGI.escape, that looks for um, a particular class of characters, characters that are part of uh, that are commonly part of requests and specifically HTML, and it will turn those into their HTML encodings. So this is, this is an example of an HTML encoding. The browser then sees this, and it knows how to turn that back into a brace. And so rather than being rendered as part of the HTML, it's rendered as content within the page, right? So there's a whole class of these HTML entities that you can use um, explicitly or via something like CGI escape. All right, so... 
Um, that that CGI escape prevented this specific example from breaking. Let's test it with our JavaScript example. Okay, so there's the little script snippet that I put in before. And if I submit that, now rather than that JavaScript uh, running within the page, since it was all escaped using HTML entities, it's just displayed. So um, we can see that that JavaScript is now rendered harmless via escaping. So anytime that you take user data and then display that user data back in a page, you need to be careful with that and make sure that you're escaping it so that it doesn't um, do something malicious or, or, or even just break the, the visual layout of your site. And it turns out once we get to working with templates, escaping will be pretty easy. Um, and so we'll only have to do CGI escape for, for the time being.